Thank you, moderator, Ms. Brian. I recognize our distinguished Prime Minister and our Medical Chief of Staff, Dr. Wilkinson, as well as our Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Laws, and those of our viewing and listening audiences. From the beginning of the academic year in September 2020, the school system here in the Federation, through the providence of the Almighty God, had the good fortune of delivering in-person in instruction, face-to-face -face instruction to our students. Our students were happy to return to the physical school. In spite of the restrictions placed on them, they enjoyed being there. Their play was restricted. They had to wear masks, hand sanitize, take their temperature taken on a daily basis. Our school administrators, teachers, support staff must be highly applauded for pulling together to ensure that the protocols were enforced and adhered to. For us in education, we weathered the storms well. During the year, much teaching and learning have been taking place. Students were assessed continuously on their learning experiences. Students of grade four and grade six experienced an enhanced curriculum that is being piloted in all of our primary schools in the Federation. This is just a sample of the successes that we enjoyed during this, the current school year as a Ministry of Education. On May 20th and 21st, for the first time, our schools were given a two-day midterm break as a respite from the challenges brought on us by COVID-19. And then look what happened. It is ironic that the COVID-19 unleashed its venom, its poison on our schools just at the time when we were giving schools a break from the challenges created by COVID-19. Let's make no mistake, the COVID-19 is making a huge impact on our schools. Learning is disrupted just on the brink of examinations. Schools are forced to abandon their field trips and educational tours. Graduations may not be held except virtually. Parents are forced to remain at home to provide care for their children. Some parents may actually lose their jobs. COVID-19 is in our schools. Teachers, students, ancillary staff are contracting the virus. Some are in quarantine. We as adults, parents, teachers, must leverage the resources at our disposal to stop the spread of this deadly virus. Let me be straightforward here. Parents and teachers must be vaccinated. We have a moral and God-given responsibility to protect the children that God has given to us. Some of us are coming up with various excuses for not taking the vaccine. As recently as yesterday, during a parent teachers meeting at the Sandy Point Primary School, I was shocked to hear one parent said that they need more education. And then I wondered under which rock this parent has been living. Because we have embarked on a lot of education programs to educate our citizens, our country, as to the vaccination administration. The Ministry of Education in, in itself organized a series of information sessions 
throughout the length and breadth of this country. Educating parents, educating teachers, ev educating everyone. I wish at this juncture to extend the heartfelt appreciation and thanks to all the medical professionals who have worked with the Ministry of Education to ensure that these information sessions were delivered. I single out Dr. Dwayne Archibald, a young brilliant doctor who, on finishing his night shift at the JNF, did not go home. Instead, he headed to the k -On Primary School where he addressed both primary and secondary school teachers. And that is the kind of uh, personal sacrifice that persons within the Ministry of Health are giving to us. It was at the end of that session that I actually took my first um, job um, on that occasion. I said to parents, I said to teachers, that at this time we have to stop stiffening our necks and hardening our hearts. I would like actually for somebody to check what the Bible says about stiffening our necks and hardening our hearts. And when you're calling, you can make reference to so tell us what happens. As of today, the virus is rampant. We can say it is rampant in our school. It has forced our schools to close for the next two weeks in the first instance. And as Dr. Cameron said, this might likely happen again, repeatedly. During this time, our schools will deliver online instruction. The system is not perfect yet, but we have enough resources that will enable teachers to deliver online instruction. I was very heartened this morning when a parent called me in a different matter. And in the conversation, she said that her daughter, who attends the Bronte Welch Primary School, would be receiving her first online lesson at, at 9 o'clock this morning. And so some teachers have actually started the process. We are currently in conversations with our principals who will guide this process. Additionally, our teachers have received the training that they can implement online instruction. So we are appealing to our teachers, our assistant teachers, our teaching assistants rather, to make use of the training that they've received and put their skills to the test. We are depending on you. The testing of children and teachers is on the way in some schools. Tomorrow, Wednesday, we proceed with testing schools in the vast, some schools in the Basti area. This information has been communicated to principals who in turn have sent this information out to their students. We expect that persons would turn up as requested so that these tests could be administered. Let us do what is good, what is noble, what is honorable for the well-being of our country, St. Kitts and Nevis. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Hodge. And given all that has been said this evening, I am certain